What's up my 42 subscribers and welcome back to yet another unit review. Today we'll be looking at Cats in the Cradle, one of my favorite Ubers in the game. Uh, Cats in the Cradles is a frontline tanker with a 30% chance of knocking back floatings and aliens, a level 2 wave attack, and freeze immunity. In my opinion, Cats in the Cradles is a really underrated Uber. I never really see anyone using them or talking about them, despite the fact that they have really good stats and really good abilities, and not to mention Cats in the Cradles is a pretty fun Uber to use and play with, at least in my opinion. So let's look more closely at his abilities first. Cats in the Cradle's primary ability is a guaranteed chance of a level 2 wave attack, which extends up to 532 range. While not very suitable for backline or sniping, it does double his 6k DPS to 12k DPS, an extremely high number and very appropriate for his frontline tanker role. Although his wavelength is pretty short, it can easily snipe and kill enemy mid-rangers like Albro, Moth, Clear up any other units not within Cats in the Cradle's standing range, and helps increase his overall accuracy. Cats in the Cradle's second ability is a 30% chance to knock back aliens of floating. Combined with his wave attack, Cats in the Cradles can knock back an enemy twice in just one attack cycle, which looks pretty funny. Unfortunately though, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you view his ability, uh, it's pretty ineffective. With only a 30% proc rate in a 10 second attack cycle, it's unlikely you see this ability actually hit much, and even if you do, Cats in the Cradles has really high damage, so that usually knocks back the enemy regardless of his knockback ability. Cats in the Cradles' base damage of 59.5k, combined with his wave attack, deals a whopping 119k damage in one hit, which is more than a Bahamut. So yeah, his knockback ability is rarely seen, but it does look pretty funny when it procs, and at least this means you won't be afraid of Misley Syndrome when using Cats in the Cradle. As a bonus, Cats in the Cradles also has freeze immunity, this comes in handy when using him in stages that also have Henry, Chick-fil-A, Zeal, and any other freeze enemies you'll encounter. Not a game-changing immunity, but this is definitely very helpful and does not harm him in any way. With all his abilities discussed, let's go over his pros and cons. Cats in the Cradle's most powerful asset is his amazing stats. I'll pull them up again so you can see. He has tons of HP, really high damage and DPS when you factor in his waves, uh, so these large stats easily make him a generalist tanker, similar to Kai and Jamira, and in my opinion is basically just an uber rare version of Jamira due to his higher standing range and overall better stats. Cats in the Cradle's next high point is his low cost and low cooldown. These qualities further solidify Cats in the Cradle as a solid frontline tanker because tankers often have low survivability due to being in the front lines and taking all the hits. So having low cost and cooldown is a must for every good tanker. Cats in the Cradle's third good quality is just his overall design in general. Uh, he has 2k B count, good movement speed, high damage with a long time between attacks, and these are all good because of he is a tanker. If a tanker has too many knockback counts, he can't really tank and he just gets juggled by the enemy. If the tanker is too slow, he can't get to the front line and protect anyone, and he just lags behind and will get hit a lot by longer range enemies before he can actually attack them. And if a tanker doesn't have high damage, he usually dies before he can get a good amount of hits in. Luckily, Cats in the Cradle doesn't fall into any of these pitfalls. Unlike some of his fellow tankers like Hades, who has rapid attacks and usually deals little damage, Hellboard and Emma, whose 10k beat can't get her juggled like a ball, and Sodom, who is slow and super expensive. Now, this makes Cats in the Cradle sound like the ultimate tank unit, and he's really good at what he does, but let's talk about his issues now. His first weakness is the same among all frontline tankers, so it's not specific to him, but he is very low standing. This just comes in the very essence of being a frontline tanker, so I'm just going to breeze over this one quick, but you know, obviously having higher standing range is better for survivability and stuff, so let's go to his next weakness now. His next weakness is his long force swing. Cats in the Cradle's force swing is 2 seconds long, which isn't terrible, but it does cause him to miss sometimes, especially if you have a bunch of other strong attackers with you, or if the enemy has a high KP cap. This can completely screw you over sometimes, because Cats in the Kratos only gets a few hits off before he dies most of the time, due to his 10 second attack rate and low range. So every hit counts, and missing one means missing out on that powerful 59.5k damage wave attack. His 2 second force swing can also get him juggled by enemies with knockback abilities sometimes, like Trolley Blogger, H Na, and the Mole. Cats in the Cradle's third weakness is another one that all frontline tankers share. He does very poorly against high DPS enemy stacks. For example, even with his high HP, a swarm of Shadow Boxer Ks would instantly rip him apart if he was alone. Uh, this means for the most part, you won't really want to use Cats in the Cradles against enemies that form high DPS stacks, unless Cats in the Cradles outranges them and has meat shield and crowd control support. Now to go to the rankings. 
In early game, casting the Cradle is an F tier because he absolutely sucks before his true form, sadly. So never use him until you get his true form. If you somehow have him in early game, though, he's easily S tier due to his super bulky stats and the fact he can outrange some melee enemies that are problematic, like uh, the Traitless Otter and the Traitless Dash Out. You know, the dog thing. The dog that stands up. You know what I'm talking about. Mid game, casting the Cradles is A tier. The only reason he isn't higher is due to the nature of being a frontline tank. He can't necessarily be called a pure generalist since frontline tankers can't be used everywhere, but he can be helpful in a good deal situations and is a good generalist tanker, though not necessarily a generalist, so that's why he gets A- tier. In late game, Cats in the Cradle stays in A- tier. You'd think he'd go lower and due to enemies being more powerful and having higher DPS now, but there's still a lot of hard stages where Cats in the Cradle is good. Some examples are Daboo's March to Death, Growing Epic, and Kappa's Conservation Society. Now for the specialist tier. Cats in the Cradle is A tier in this category. This is because he really makes no faults when it comes to being a frontline tanker, and the only reason he can't reach S tier is because of his longish force swing that makes him miss sometimes, and there's a really big weakness in this. Despite this, Cats in the Cradle is basically unrivaled when it comes to the frontline tanker category, especially due to his wave attacks, which are very unique to him, and help him stand out from Ubers like Kai and Immortal Kaiji. So yeah, that sums up Cats in the Cradle. So a great Uber, very fun to use in my opinion and stays relevant throughout most of the game as a good tanker and just overall DPS frontliner unit. Uh, as of writing this script, I hope to publish this video on Monday, but uh, I'm actually going to publish it tomorrow on Tuesday, just to leave you guys with something, and if you didn't know, uh, tomorrow I'm going on vacation for about a week and a half, so yeah, I won't really be posting any quote-unquote effort videos, uh, no unit reviews, because I can't access my PC to edit, but... I'll leave you with this before I leave, publishing it in the morning probably, or I might publish it tonight, I don't really know. Uh, and as usual, uh, please subscribe, please like, please leave a comment, any good songs you think would fit in the videos, preferably copyright free, and uh, any units you want next that uh, you think would be interesting to review. Feedback and criticism always appreciated, and I really do want to better these videos. I feel like they've been following the same formula for the past... Uh, I don't know, since I've been making them, kind of the same formula, which I don't really see anything wrong with it myself, but if you guys think I should add anything to the mix or, you know, give me some new secret ingredients to put in my videos, uh, that'd be awesome. Also, thanks for 40 subscribers. Uh, I know that's not really a lot, but 40 is still a good amount. Like, if 40 people in a room, you'd say that's like a small crowd, right? So, it's not really a lot in the grand scheme of things, but to me, it is a nice, decent little number, and I appreciate everyone. Uh, also, I was wondering what I should do for my 69 subscribers special, which will probably come up soon when I get like 27 more subscribers. Uh, I was thinking about playing a different game other than Battle Cats, like, you know, Minecraft or R6 or I, I don't know, it could be anything. It could be something in real life, like a cooking video, whatever you guys want, just let me know. And, uh, sorry, again, I always say this because people probably wonder why the last part of the video is so bad. I don't really uh, do any takes on the conclusion, so I'm just randomly talking about stuff as I think of it. But yeah, thanks for 42 subs, I uh, appreciate every one of you, and tell me what I should do for a 69 subscriber special, I'll be back next month with a unit review, probably uh, I get back to July 1st, so I'll probably make another video and publish it a couple days after I get back, because you guys will go a while without any of these unit reviews. And that's kind of it. Sorry if I keep saying and and um or so and I'll write a lot, because I'm just thinking of things to say in between, you know, thinking, because again, it's all one take. Uh, so, yeah, I say so. Sorry about that. And I'll stop ranting, have a good night, and see you guys.